welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a few quick ways that you can start retouching skin and not have to basically spend three or four hours retouching a single photo because I've been getting a lot of requests lately for a simpler retouching tutorial and it's something that I have been wanting to do for a little while because I do think that as great as dodge and burn is and as great as frequency separation is, sometimes you can spend a long time doing both of those things and I just wanted to really go through a few of the tools that I use if I'm doing a quicker retouch. It's not often these days that I do a quicker retouch because most of my work is beauty and fashion related and most of my beauty images uh, unfortunately sometimes require a couple of hours worth of editing depending on the image. But I figured for a lot of photographers out there who don't have to spend too much time on retouching like maybe if you're a wedding photographer and you really don't have the time to be spending a few hours on each photo, hopefully this tutorial might be good for you. So I'm going to go through the first few tools that I would use for a quick retouch and the way that I would do it. So to explain a little bit better, the first thing that I would do for a quick retouch is just by duplicating the background layer here. So we just drag that into the new layer box just over here and would get a background copy. So this is basically where I do some of my healing work. And the healing tools are just located over here on the left hand side of the toolbar. And you've got a few different ones. So you've got the spot healing brush tool. I quite often use this even in conjunction with my dodging and burning for a lot of my beauty work. I find it's a really versatile tool and it doesn't affect too much of the skin and the quality of it either. Uh, the healing brush tool is another good one and the patch tool, the patch tool is a little bit different. I do find that sometimes the patch tool can lessen the quality and I don't always like to use it uh, depending on the style of editing that I'm doing. But for a quick retouch, I generally stick to the spot healing brush tool just here because it is quick to use and also, like I said, it does retain image quality pretty good depending on how you use it. So I'm just going to start to zoom in here on Hannah's face and I'm going to show you what I would quickly do for a quicker retouch. So for the healing brush tools, I would use the spot healing brush to just go over any little pimples or blemishes on the face and just quickly get those out the way first off. I'd also make sure that in the brush settings up here that pen pressure is selected with my tablet because I find that it's a little bit more easily directed onto the areas that you want to edit and I just feel like you've got a little bit more control with that. So I'm going to continue removing some of the blemishes here just quickly. And now there were certain times where I probably would use the patch tool, but I would use it very sparingly and not consistently throughout the image because it can tend to lower some of the image quality when you're using it. So I'm going to just select the patch tool and show you guys what that will do. Just this area here that I want to make a little bit more even, I'm just going to move that down there. And just over here where this blemish is, I'm just going to move that across just to give that a little bit more texture. But that's pretty much as far as I would go with the patch tool on certain areas. I wouldn't be doing the whole face with the patch tool um, just because I prefer using the spot healing brush to begin with. So I'm going to go back to the spot healing brush and continue just with these little blemishes down here. You can also use the spot healing brush for any fine lines and hairs, which is actually really great and why it's such a versatile tool overall. So obviously I could go on and do more, but this is a quick retouch, so I'm going to stop there. And as you can see, I've just removed any of the little bumps on the skin, any of the main ones for this particular image. So now I'm going to show you guys how I would do a very quick dodge and burn. So I'm going to actually rename this one now, just so I don't confuse you guys. And this one's going to be Healing Tools. Now I'm going to duplicate this background layer again, but the top layer this time. And then we're going to rename this Dodge and Burn. And this is how I would do a very quick dodge and burn. So to do a quick dodge and burn, I would usually just use the dodge and burn tools over on the left hand side here. It is not very often that I would use these alone. There's lots of different ways to dodge and burn in Photoshop. And this is usually the way that I wouldn't choose. But if I was doing a quick retouch or if I was doing uh, types of portraiture where retouching wasn't as important, 
definitely this is something that I would use to do quickly. So usually I would stick to the mid-tones, I would make the brush size a little bit bigger and keep it quite soft and the exposure will just move down to 1% here. And then I'm just going to start filling in some of the darker areas on the skin tone that are a bit shadowy just to kind of even out the skin a little bit but I'm not going to spend too much time with this it's just going to be in the main highlighted and shadowed areas this isn't going to be like a, a full dodging and burning tutorial So we're just going on any little dark spots on the skin tone and just sort of filling them in a little bit more just to kind of even the skin tone out quite quickly. So just remembering if you've watched my previous dodge and burn tutorials you know that I don't tend to use just the dodge tool which is quite commonly done and it's kind of I guess a, a very common mistake that a lot of people do tend to make. It's always good to use the burn tool as well for the shadowed areas just so you keep that definition with the skin. So I'm going to continue using the burn tool on the midtones at 1%. I'm just going to go over any bits over here that are a little bit lighter and just need to be evened out a little bit more. I'm just going to keep this really quite natural. This is really what this tutorial is all about, is just keeping the skin very natural. This is a natural edit. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and you can see that the dodging tool, when I turn that layer on and off, you can see how that's just kind of smoothed out the skin just a little bit uh, to the point where it gives you that nice texture still, but it's helping with the light and shadow a little bit more. So now my next step for a quick retouch would be to just create a brand new layer just with this button here. And then we're going to rename this one texture. And this is the part of my quick retouch where I would grab the paintbrush tool on a very soft brush and we'll make it 0% hardness and just bump up the size of the brush a little bit. And we'll keep the flow on about 4%. And this is where I'd start to get the eyedropper tool and go over the places in the skin where the texture's a little bit too uneven still. And this will help really quickly get it looking a little bit more even and especially tone wise as well if it's still not. So I'm gonna eye drop just a color probably around here. And now I'm gonna start just painting over the skin tone just to kind of soften it up a little bit so we don't have too much texture there. And I'm going to keep using the eyedropper to select different areas of the face so I can start to paint over those uneven areas. So as you can see I'm just using different parts to help smooth the skin a little bit more. And I keep changing the brush size as well just so it has a little bit more direction on where we need the texture and where we don't. So you do have to be quite light handed with this but it is a much quicker way of just kind of smoothing out the skin so it still looks nice and soft but still retains a bit of the texture as well. So this probably takes the longest, I'd say, out of everything, just really putting those final touches on the quick retouch. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this layer on and off in a second just to see 
how we're going with the skin texture and you guys can see what a difference that is making. So if you wanted, you can lower the opacity on that texture layer. If you feel like you've gone a bit far, you can just kind of bring that down a little bit to say 80% instead of the 100% and you still have a really natural effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a snapshot now and show you guys the before and after. So this is the before and that is the after. Now that's just doing a really quick retouch. I've probably been working on this photo for say 10 to 15 minutes or so. Um, I mean, you can make it quicker than that. I suppose I'm probably just doing a little bit more on this image because it is a closer up image, but this would generally work very quickly on an image that is further away of a portrait. So I'm just gonna go through all the layers so you can see what each layer has done. So I'm gonna click all of the layers so the texture and the dodge and burn layer off and then you can see what the healing tool layer has done and then the dodge and burn on top of that and then the texture layer on top of that has really helped smooth it out a little bit more so i'm going to show another before and after now so the before and the after so guys, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it was helpful for you. I know I've had a few people asking me about this sort of tutorial for a while now, so I thought I'd really get into gear and finally get one out for you guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do. And please let me know what you wanna see on my channel. I'm always looking for new ideas and you guys always have really great ideas when it comes to tutorials. And I know that there's so much out there that I could probably do in Photoshop for you. And hopefully I'll be pre-filming a lot of videos before I go to New Zealand too. So if you have any requests, please leave them in the comments section below. So thank you guys again so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.